Hi, my name is uh, Jamil Paolo Francisco, or JAMU, and I am Associate Dean at the Asian Institute of Management. Uh, I am also an economics professor, and I head this uh, research center called the uh, Rizalino S. Navarro Policy Center for Competitiveness. As Associate Dean and also as a professor, one of the most common questions I hear now in 2019 would be, will robots take my job? Uh, and that's a very valid question. For fourth industrial revolution, we're now talking about machine learning, artificial intelligence, self-driving cars, and who knows what the future holds to bring. The most popular course in the Philippines these days would be business administration. It would be teacher training and education. It would be engineering and IT, as well as medical-related courses like nursing. Now, the common idea among people is that if you take any of these courses, you're good for life. You have a great job waiting for you after spending four, maybe even more years in college. Sadly, the bad news is that according to technologists and futurists these days, many of the jobs that students from these fields would, would eventually have are jobs that can be easily automatable. For example, 99%, that's the probability of a job being a new accounts clerk in a bank to be automated. If you're an accountant, 10, 15, 20 years ago, all of our parents would dream that we would be accountants. But now, the probability of a job in accounting to be automated is actually 94%. If you're a financial analyst, it's about 50%. Now, remember that friend who works for this insurance company selling you financial instruments and financial products? The probability of him losing a job is just a little below 60%. I'm an economist, and the probability of my job being automated is about 43%. Now, thankfully, I moonlight as a teacher as well, and apparently for teachers, the probability of your job being automated is just around 1%. There's a little paradox here, because in the past, we thought that jobs that uh, were difficult to study in college are the jobs that would be secure for us for the rest of our lives. Accountancy was always a very difficult subject, but apparently if you're an accountant, there's a greater chance you'll be automated than if you were selling financial products. Well, it seems that there are certain functions or tasks in jobs which are more likely to be automated, and there are some other functions or skills which are less likely to be automated. Frey and Osborne are particularly popular authors that have worked on uh, substitutability of automation. Um, and the automation of jobs. Uh, and in their work from the 2000s, which they published in 2017, they said that basically there are three hurdles to automation, three obstacles which prevent the job from being automated. And these are perception and manipulation skills, creative intelligence, as well as social intelligence. When you say perception or manipulation, what you mean here is that, you know, that skill of identifying and tweaking and working around unstructured environments. Uh, algorithms work when things follow a pattern, when there's structure. But once there's a little bit more of chaos and requires a little bit more dynamic thinking, for now at least, it seems that technologies aren't able to cope up. For there, you need a human. Creative intelligence is all about, well, telling a joke or singing a song. When was the last time you tried that? Uh, robots, for now, can't do that. So that is something which is uniquely human. Finally, social intelligence is all about communicating, interacting, reading the, trying to read the minds of people, reading how their faces express certain emotions and empathizing with them. That too is an inherently human trait. It's these human skills, creative intelligence, social intelligence, and perception manipulation in unstructured environments, which supposedly are more difficult to automate. So if your job involves mostly these kinds of tasks, or tasks which require these kinds of skills, then your job will probably be less automatable in the future. So, what's the impact of that on education? What's the impact of that in terms of uh, the economy as a whole? That means that the skills that we have to build are skills which are more human and less automatable. That means now that we have to change the way we look at education. Uh, in the past, we used to live a three-stage life which means first I study, then I start working, and then finally I start reaping the rewards of X decades of work, retirement. And when you ask someone how old they are, automatically you know what part of their life 
they are in, what stage of their life they are in, what problems they're currently facing, what aspirations they have. That's changing now. That's changing because we're entering a world where it's a multi-stage life, which means I could study for a while, then I could go to work, then maybe I'll study again, then maybe I am forced to find new work, or maybe I want to explore another side of me. I realize that I want to be a singer, I want to be a painter, I want to be an artist. I realize I want to be an entrepreneur. Um, and it's all about transitioning from one job to another, from one life path to another. And that's what the future holds when it, when it comes to both work and uh, education. I get to speak with a lot of millennials, obviously. Many of my students are millennials. I myself am a feeling annual. Uh, that's what we call people who feel that they're millennials. Basically, when they ask me about, okay, sir, what course should I take? What job is the best job for the future? My answer is, well, I don't know. And that's the beauty about being a millennial. Every person should think more like a millennial. Why? Because a millennial is always open to many opportunities. It's always open to many alternative paths. And because the future is uncertain, the skills of the future are also uncertain. So what we need is to learn how to learn new skills faster than what we have been used to. And learning to learn fast means honing skills which are inherently human. These are skills which rely less on patterns, on structure, and these are skills which allow us to be more flexible in interacting with other human beings and with encountering new challenges, new opportunities that might come about. <music>